Hi, I'm Joel. I'm in California and I'm going for a run. Uh, I might not run far, uh, I might not run fast, but I have run every day for nearly eight years. And one of the greatest things about running every day is you get to meet some really interesting people. So uh, I bought this camera and this embarrassing selfie stick and uh, I want to try and record some of these experiences and some of the people that I get to run with so other people can enjoy it. Let's go. Today I'm running with Gary Rust. Gary's a very interesting person because where I started running every day on January the 1st, 2011, Gary, when did you start running? Joel, I started running July 3, 1983, <laughs> in <laughs> Sisters, Oregon. 1983. So that's... I've been running nearly eight years, every day. You've been running every day for 35 years, is that right? 35 plus. Unbelievable. That's incredible. And, uh, and am I right in thinking you... You even were streaking before that, right? I streaked before that. And then you lost it. I didn't realize that there was a streaking club. I just ran every day because I loved it. And I had no idea that there was a, an organization that was keeping totals uh, until some time later. But I had a streak for one year, and I had streaks before that. And then I would stop. But once I found out about the organization that was a, a motivator for me to never stop again. <laughs> and this is the International Running Streak Association organized by Mark Washbrook who was the guy that connected you and I together in the first place. Correct. Now, in the rankings of us crazy street runners, I'm way hey down in the hundreds or something. And what number are you? I'm number 41. So only 40 people in the world have been running longer than you. Yeah, they have a longer streak than I do. That's right, 40 others. Now, that's pretty incredible. And Ron Hill was the longest running streak, and he stopped running, what, a year or so ago? We all went up one in the rankings. We all went up one. Yeah. Well, we don't wish that on anyone, but when it happens, it, uh, it does move us up one. Because you, you've got to know that it must be really painful for these people to stop running who have, you know, 40-year streaks. I'd have to have a, see a sports psychologist, I think, if, if I break my, my, my streak record here. Well, I'm, I'm only eight years invested. You're 35 years invested. That's pretty impressive. But I can't imagine what life would throw at me or at you uh, to make me stop running. But So what, what are the sort of things you've overcome on, in your 35 years to... to uh, keep running every day and the minimum just so we're clear is the minimum you've got to run for it to be a streak is a mile right we have to run a mile um, I've I've had both heels operated on <laughs> and still, bone spurs removed and you still got to run in the next day well yes I did I I had a an orthopedic surgeon friend of mine that I would run with in Portland Oregon who did one of my feet, and uh, I told him, I said, Doc, I have a streak going, I, I'm going to run tomorrow. He said, I know, I'm going to put a certain kind of boot on you that you can run. So I ran after midnight, the day of the surgery, so that took care of that day. <laughs> and then, the surgery wasn't bad, I, I stayed awake and watched him do it, and uh, that after the surgery the next day I jogged a mile and continued to do so for the next two or three days and then I moved up to two and three I do do some of my running on a treadmill especially here in California where it really gets hot in the summer. I should say we're in uh, we're in Palm Springs in California, running in Indian canyons where I've never run before, but 
Gary's got lots of experience and it's beautiful, it's not too hot today so it's a nice run. Also I had both knees scoped and I did the same thing there. My, my, I had the meniscus cleaned up on both knees. It was very sore the following day or two but I was managed to get my mile in. I averaged six miles a day. Jeez, that's incredible. My average is 3.6, I think, 3.4 or something. Now you're making me feel bad. I try to do 2,000 to 2,300 miles a year. I even have a streak in that. People say I'm crazy, Gary. <laughs> And how old are you? Let's, let's get this out of the way because um, I don't want to flatter you, but you look like you're nearly, nearly 30 or something maybe. Yeah, I'm approaching 73. 73. Wow. I'm, never again am I going to complain about having to go for a run. That's amazing. Now, you must have been put, inspired some other folks to start a running streak, right? Well, my, my wife, my much younger wife, has a streak of 14 years. That's incredible. And our 18-year-old son has a streak of eight years. Same as you. Wow. I know. And how old was he when he started? Ten. Ten. That's I hope my daughters are watching this. Sasha, Tara, they complain like crazy when I take them running. Girls, start now. And when you become our age, you'll be... Number one in the world. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to do any good. <laughs> Thanks for trying. I really appreciate it. My daughter Tara, she's got a great gait. She's perfect. She's really sporty. She looks fantastic when she runs. Looks effortless, which frankly I don't. And Sasha, she looks like me when she runs. We've got to we've got to earn every step of it. We don't get any free uh, glide. This is lovely scenery. I'm really glad we came out here. What distance are we at? I forgot to start my watch. <laughs> so did I. Oh no! <laughs> I me... typically don't run with one. I know the distance on the route. I'm guessing that's about a mile. That's annoying. I've just started my Garmin now. Yes, I was a I was a coach on the East Coast and in the Rehoboth Beach area and when I moved west I had a group of 17 adults in the uh, Southern California area that I coached and we did an enormous amount of speed work. Right. So we would go to the track no less than twice a week. And uh, there's a certain group of the guys that would go to a, a, a lot of races with me. And it'd typically be about eight regulars. Right. And I remember we were racing in Yuma. Arizona. It was a 5K. And all eight of us got a got a podium wow. for our age division. That's incredible. And one of, I've never won anything. <laughs> one of the guys from uh, Yuma came over to me and said, So, you got eight guys here. They all got an award. What do you guys do? I said, well, let me tell you. Last Tuesday, we did 30 times 200 fast. Wow. He looked at me and said, why the world would you want to do 30 of those fast? And I looked at him and I said, held my ribbon and said, to win. Yeah, no kidding. Now, has racing been an important part of oh, your Oh, very, yeah. Very important. In 2001, 
if I ran in the uh, Masters World Championships, I got first in the mile in 454. I was 56 years old. That's incredible. 50, yeah, 56 or 57. And I got I got second in the 800 meters. Got beat by a guy from Canada <laughs> by a step. Wow. Yeah. But racing has been very important. I've done over well over 400 races. That's amazing. And I have over 375 podiums. I'm a counter. I count everything. Yeah, well I do. And <laughs> I'm annoyed that I didn't start my watch. Yeah, me too. <laughs> See, I don't really like racing because I find I run fast and uncomfortable with. I miss the scenery because I'm too busy trying to reel people in. And I never to be hurt myself. The last 10k I did in Toronto was I really got an Achilles problem after that. And uh, so I tend, I tend to avoid them. But I uh, have great respect for people who are training fast to run fast. Equally, I have a massive amount of respect for people who train long to run long distances. Ultra marathoning seems really? to be increasingly popular these days. I've got friends who run a long, long way. But I think my groove is, personally, a little bit every day, forever. Great. Hopefully, my street won't fall over. Keep my fingers crossed. Well, my, my wife doesn't like 5Ks. She'll put up with a 10K. But she's more of a marathoner. Yeah. 50K, 50 mile. And 100 mile. Jeez, really? Runner. Yep. Wow. She uh, recently ran a 50 miler and was first overall. That's incredible. Among women and men. And what's even more incredible is she got up the next day and went for a run. That's. Went up the next day, went to work, <laughs> and did a run. But she even beat the year before's champ in the 50 miles. That's inspiring. That's really. Or inspire. She may be the one you should be running with. Yeah. <laughs> Next time I'm in Palm Springs, I'll leave you at home, Gary. Yeah, okay. You don't even remind me to start my garment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, have you experimented with gear since you've been running? Like, are you, you're, you're wearing fairly standard shoes, I see. Have you tried the whole barefoot thing or the no. Min minimal? No, my feet. My feet are too bad to experiment with anything barefooted. Right. I have a, uh, I have bunions. Thanks to my grandmother, <laughs> and I don't do anything. I get very wide shoes. Right. And but nothing, uh, nothing barefoot or the ones with the little toes. Yeah. No. I read. Uh Born to run, as I'm pretty sure everybody has. Right. Who's got any interest in running? And I was intrigued by the whole barefoot running phenomenon, but I couldn't get into it. And I run with hokers, which are kind of the opposite of barefoot running. And I'm on my sixth pair, I think, and I'm very happy with them. I like them a lot. Are they heavy? No, the light as a feather. Yeah, okay. These are the speed goats, which are the trail yeah. ones, but they're pretty adaptable. I try and do most of my running on trail if I can because it's more interesting and 99% of the time I'm not running with other people but uh, it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to run with you. Thank you likewise. You know, sure. I'm, I'm not even a beginner. I don't think they even count the running streak until you've done a year right? Yeah you're that guy. you have to have a complete year of running unassisted but a treadmill is permitted. Yeah. I've done one treadmill run this year. I just can't be. I haven't got the patience for them. I like getting out and seeing things. Do you run with music? Do you listen to music when you're running? 
Never do I listen to music. Yeah, I mean either. Never once. Not once? Uh-uh. Wow. <laughs> Unless the band is playing it right. alongside of the road. Yeah. Can't believe we let that school bus pass us. I know. We let them pass us. Yeah, that's true. We slowed down for <laughs> People are very friendly, I've found, here in California. When you're out running, they acknowledge you, say hello, and even walkers. And Wave you on. Yeah. yeah. In Europe, they're like that. Oddly enough, Canada, I find people don't even acknowledge you. And the Canadians are super friendly people. I don't know why that is. It's not running protocol yet. Well, it's not exactly ideal running climate over there. So many people don't understand. Well, maybe... I think uh, two years ago I ran in January in northern Sweden and it was minus 22 Celsius and I ran here in Palm Springs and it was plus 45. That was quite a spread. I don't believe in treadmills but running in the heat is just soul destroying. I remember landing in Heathrow on one of my visits to South Africa and I had not run that day so I rented a locker put my carry-ons in it undid my tie my jacket and I went out in the cold and ran on what I recall is some cobblestone street <laughs> yeah I think you get arrested if you try to do that these days but I got a mile in good for you or maybe a little more it's amazing that, you know, ten years ago before I started my streak, the thought of me running was unthinkable. I'd have to force myself to go for a run. Now the thought of me not running yeah. is unthinkable. <laughs> I have dreams where I wake up in the middle of the night and think, ah, I'm done my run. <laughs> oh, thank God. Now you started uh, on New Year's, didn't you? Yeah. It's the only resolution I've ever kept. And now, of course, I'm tied into it. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting game. Did we pass that tarantula yet? We... I haven't been looking. There was a tarantula on the road as we were driving up here. I'm not sure I want to see him again. Yeah, they actually don't, don't uh, bite. They don't hurt you. I'm sure we can do They're just one. scary. Yeah. And hairy. When I was in the army in Texas, I, co I, I collected six of them and took them back home to my class. Uh, I was a school teacher. Right. Took them back home to my class uh, for them to help raise. So they were bringing crickets in and grasshoppers to feed them, but they all let them walk on their hands, on their arms. Yeah, that sounds sound like a lot of fun. Should we run up towards Andreas County, then back down and round? Okay, there's the gate. Yeah, I don't want to run outside particularly. Yeah. So we run 3.1, in case you want to... Well, three, because it's, uh, I'm going to start this, so I have an idea, a little bit better. So from the top to that thing? Yeah, it's three miles. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. You all right? Yeah, man. There we go. All good. Every time I feel like not running and it doesn't happen very often but when I fly back on uh, Saturday I'll do my run in the morning here in this nice beautiful weather and I'll get off a plane in the UK it's going to be cold dark rainy probably rainy <laughs> I'm gonna have to drop my bags at home and immediately go out and run again I'm not looking forward to that but it's surprising how powerful a draw not 
breaking your streak is. And the fact that people like you have been doing it for so long. If you can do it, Gary, geez, anybody can do it. That's well, right. I don't consider myself a runner. You're, you're a natural. You've coached running. You've raced. I'm way too fat and heavy, really, for this sort of work. But well, when I was a young pup, my best mile time was 4:54. <laughs> I had dreams of being the first guy over 40 to break four minutes uh, before. Eamon Coglin did it, and when I ran my best, uh, I, I realized I'd have to run over five seconds faster per lap. Wow. You know, another 50 meters. And I thought, uh, it's on my bucket list, but my bucket's got a hole in it. <laughs> well, you're, what's your fastest... 5k time 1554 that's insane I just did 5k in 2208 yeah, but that nearly killed me I was 40 <laughs> well, <laughs> sadly I'm not that much older than that well I I would tell my my runners that I was coaching in order to race fast you must train fast yeah and that's what we did I've heard this, an expression that most people do their fast runs too slow and their slow runs too, too fast. fast. How'd you get into coaching? Because I, I was a PE coach. teacher. Yeah. And so I coached our little track team. Right. And went on from there. Then when I was lived in Oregon, I had a fabulous running coach named Bob Williams. I love him to this day. And... He greatly inspired me. I had a PE coach in high school, Fillmore Clifton, and two other coaches, Jim Harf and Ben Sermon. They also were instrumental in me staying fit. So, so you've done a lot of work on the track over the years, right? Oh, a lot of work. Yeah. My wife used to tease me saying, I was married to the track. <laughs> Working at the Oval Office. Because I left a lot of sweat there. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> Have you done any other kind of runs, like a triathlon or anything? No. Uh, I'm everything pretty much straight ahead with my arms and legs. Yeah. No, no swimming, uh, no biking races. Although I like to ride the bike. We're going uphill. Yeah, that's why we're puffing and panting. I have a thing on a swim run next month in December in Sweden, organised by my good friend Christopher, who has talked me into it. The swim run was, I guess, invented in the archipelago off Stockholm, where you run across an island. Then swim to the next island, run across that island. I've seen that on video, by the way. Yeah, which is fine in the summer. But Christopher is doing his at December. It's called the Hellas Swim Run. It's going to be freezing. So you can wear a wetsuit? Yeah, he's going to give me one of his wetsuits. He has a wetsuit company called Arc Swim Run, specifically designed for swim running. I'm not, you know, I'm fine with the running, but the swimming is going to kill me. Well, again, I used to tell my runners, do more of what you hate yeah. and less of what you love. Amen. So, if swimming is what you hate, do more of it to help your overall performance. Yeah, I've been swimming here in California every day. Good. I love the desert. It's so unlike anywhere else I get to run. I think that tarantula made it across the road. <laughs> well, that's all right. See if I can find him for you. <laughs> I know you'll want to take him back. Oh, Kimberly would love that. To Kimberly. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, we picked something up Honey, it's a present for you. For 
it's funny when the gradient flattens out as a runner you feel every single degree like when that flattened off then well that felt good this is uphill both ways <laughs> Well, we'll run up to these trees, that'll be three miles for us, and I really enjoyed the chat. Likewise, Joel. Best of luck to you in keeping that great streak going. Yeah. You're very high on the international list. Well, fairly I think I'm fourth or fifth in the UK. I'd love to run with those guys sometime. Maybe just trip them up. Yeah, your yeah. reputation exceed you so they're afraid to run with you <laughs> they're afraid I'll they'll think you'll do to them what you're doing to me yeah. they're afraid I'll stab them or something move up one in the rankings which could happen might happen <laughs> just saying you've heard of Jack the Ripper <laughs> <laughs> well, there. well looks like we're almost to our ending point here. Yeah. You can see the sign up ahead of us. You've done well to run holding that. It's awkward. It's the first yeah. time I've done it. If this comes out anything like interesting, it'll be a miracle. Well, you may not be able to get the wallet out of your back pocket tomorrow. <laughs> holding that arm <laughs> stiff for three. Well, there's nothing four in miles anyway. Huffing and puffing because we just went up a good in time. Well, I'm puffing more than I should be for 47, and you're barely breathing, and you're 73. So, oh, I think I'm the faking two, it. I'm faking it. The two of us, <laughs> you're doing considerably better than I am. Right. Oh, oh thank you, Gary. Joel, thank you. That was... It was wonderful. <laughs> it was extremely rewarding and gratifying. Thank you, and I hope anybody watching this is suitably inspired by Gary's uh, discipline and dedication. Uh, insanity, that's another word for yeah. it. Yeah. When I ran the tram, I finished. I was in oxygen debt, because you know the tram. Yeah. And I went over, and a guy wanted to interview me, because I, that, would have been, that was my third age group record. Right. And I was in such bad shape and oxygen debt. I wanted to say, I've been running since Moby Dick was a sardine. <laughs> but instead I said, when I was a sardine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel, man. My son and wife have laughed about that so many times. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure running with a sardine today, Gary. Thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure. <laughs> Take it easy. Thank, Thank you. you.